If you want to follow along with the project, you can find it on my GitHub page. Link in the video description. First, create a new folder in the project tab, named Materials. In this one, create two other folders, one named Graphics and the other Physics. Go into the Graphics one, right click, select Create and select Material. Name the material Trail. Choose a color you chose from the inspector. Then go into the Physics one and right click again. Select Create. 2D Physics Material 2D. Call it frictionless and set the friction to zero and the bounciness too. Then create another physics material and call it sticky. This time set the friction to 2 and the bounciness to zero. Now we can start creating the scene. Go to the main camera, reset its values and change the Y position to 5 and the Z1 to minus 10. Then right click in the hierarchy, select 2D object, sprite, square. Change the X position to minus 5, the Y to minus 4.5, and the X scale to 10. Add a box collider 2D and a rigid body 2D, set to static, and the rigid body material to frictionless. Duplicate the game object, set the X position to 5, and change the color. In the rigid body material, set the sticky one. Then rename the one with the changed color, platform slow, and the white one to platform fast. Create another square sprite, change its name to character. The X position to minus 5, the color to red. Add a rigid body 2D with a frictionless material. Collision detection continues, interpolate to interpolate. Freeze rotation to Z. Then add a trail renderer component to it, with a width of 0.1. Material trail, and turn off the cast shadows and receive shadows. You can disable or remove this component once we have found the proper values for the character controller. In the project folder, create a new one named Scripts, and inside it, another one named Controllers. Go inside it and create a new script named Input Controller. This will be our abstraction from the actual input source meaning that we can use this class to represent a generic input. Open the script, make the class abstract, and instead of mono behavior, write scriptable object. This will allow us to create instances of the controllers that you can then use in the inspector. Inside the class, create a public abstract method that returns a float named retrieveMoveInput and another one that returns a bool named retrieve jump input. Go back to the controller folder and create a new script named player controller. Open it and make so that we can create an instance of it from the menu using the create asset menu attribute. Change mono behavior to input controller and implement the missing methods. In the retrieve jump input, we are going to listen for a jump button down event. And for the retrieve move input, we'll listen for the horizontal axis. Then go back once again in the controllers folder and create a new script named AI controller. In this script, we will take the input from another source. The script is very similar to the player controller one, but this time the file name and menu name are changed and the return value of both methods too. We are not going to make any calculation, we just want to simulate an AI input. It is now possible to create discretable objects in the asset menu, but before that, let's create a new folder named scriptable objects 
and inside it another one named Controllers. Right click and select Create. You will see a new option in the Asset menu named Input Controller and inside it the Player and the I Controller. Select the Player Controller and then again the AI one. We are going to assign them once the movement component is being created. And before doing that, we need a component that determines if we are on the ground or in the air. So create a new folder in scripts named checks, and inside it a new script named ground. Inside it, create a private pool on ground and a private float friction. Then we need a way to determine if the point the game object is colliding with is the ground. To do that, we iterate through each contact point and check if the normal is greater than 0.9, one being a flat surface. We then set the result to the on ground variable. To set the friction instead, we retrieve the physics material through the collision. Set the friction to zero so that if no physics material is being used, we still get a value from this method. And if the material is not null, we set the friction value to the one specified in the material. Now that we have methods to calculate if the carter is on the ground and the ground friction, we can use the on collision enter 2D and on collision stay 2D to evaluate the collisions and get the ground friction and the on collision exit 2D to reset those values. Finally, to make use of the on ground and friction variables in other components, we use the to get methods to retrieve the values. The last thing that we need are the actual components that will handle the movement of the character. Inside the scripts folder, create a new one named Capabilities, and inside it, a script named Move. Open the script and start writing the following variables a private input controller named input. This will be our generic input. A private float named max speed with a serialized field and range attribute of 0 to 100 set to 4. Then one for the max acceleration set to 35 and max error acceleration set to 20. Then a vector 2 for the direction the character will move another for the desired velocity the character wants to achieve, one for the actual velocity the character is at, a rigid body 2D for the game object physics, the ground component to determine if the character is on the ground and retrieve the friction, a private float for the max speed change, which is how fast the speed will increase, another float for the acceleration, and a bull on ground for the ground check. Change the start method to awake and get the components for the rigid body and ground from the game object with the get component method. In the update, retrieve the direction from the generic input we created and calculate the desired velocity by using the retrieved direction and multiplying it by the maximum value between the max speed minus the friction and zero so that we always have a valid velocity that doesn't go below zero. Then create a fixed update method and inside it, retrieve the on-ground value from the ground component. Set the velocity to the current rigid body velocity. Set the acceleration based on the on-ground variable. Calculate the max speed change by multiplying the acceleration by the time dot delta time. And finally, calculating the velocity in the x-axis with the mathf.moveTowards method, which requires the current velocity, the desired velocity we want the car to achieve, and how much to increase the velocity. And finally, we assign the velocity to the rigid body velocity. Now, go in the inspector and select the character. Add the move and ground component. In the input property, select the player controller. In the main camera, increase the size to 10 and play the game. You can adjust the values depending on what you want to your card to feel 
a higher acceleration will make your character more responsive, while a lower one will make your character feel heavy. Try to find the perfect balance between the two. There is just one problem with this approach that we need to solve. Since the two platforms are made of individual colliders, the character may become stuck between the two. To solve this issue, just add an edge collider to the character, modify the Y offset to align with the bottom part of your sprite, in this case minus 0.5, and in the box collider change the Y offset to 0.01 and the Y size to 0.98. We have lifted the box collider, which was the one getting stuck in the intersection between the two colliders, and applied an edge collider which has no sides, so it can't get stuck. The last thing to do is to code the jump. So go back in the project tab and under scripts, capabilities, create a new script named jump. Open it and write the following variables. As in the move component, we need the generic input we created and a series of variables such as the jump height, the max air jumps, which is the number of jumps we are able to do once in the air, the downward movement multiplier, this is the value the gravity scale of the character will be changed to in order to increase how fast the character will fall. The upward movement multiplier instead, it's how fast the character will reach its peak. Then we need a rigid body to apply the jump velocity, the ground component to detect the ground, a vector 2 for the velocity, an int for the jump phase to track how many times we have jumped, a float for the default gravity scale so that we can always revert back to the original one, and two booleans to track if we want to jump and if we are on the ground. Then change the start method to awake. Retrieve the body and ground components and set the default gravity scale to a value of your choice. This is the value that will be applied when the character is on the ground. In the update method, we retrieve the jump input and store it by using the OR operator so that it remains set even in new update cycle until we manually set it to false. Create a new method that will perform the jump with all its logic. We first check if we are on the ground or we still have our jumps to perform. We keep track of the jump phase and calculate the jump speed by taking into consideration the formula for the jump height, which uses the gravity and the desired height we want to achieve. Then we check that the jump speed never goes negative because of the gravity and add it to the velocity. Now in the fixed update, we retrieve the ground set the velocity to the current velocity of the rigid body, if the cart is on the ground we reset the jump phase variable. Then we check if a jump is being requested, if so we set the request back to false and trigger the jump. Now that we are in the air, we apply different gravity scales depending on the actual phase of the jump. If we are going up we apply the upward moment multiplier. If we are going down, we apply the downward movement multiplier. And if we are on the ground, we revert back to the default gravity scale. And at the end of the calculations, we apply the velocity to the rigid body velocity. Back in Unity, remember to add the jump component to the character, add the player controller to the input, and play the game. Now, by adjusting the max air acceleration, you can see that when in the air, you are able to control more or less the character, depending on how high or low the air acceleration is. You can easily increase the number of jumps by setting the max air jumps in the inspector, and control how fast or slow you go up or down with the upward and downward multipliers. You can also change the input controller while playing to make the character be controlled by the AI. One last thing that I want to mention is why we applied a physics material to the carter, since we already have them for the platforms. And the answer is that if we add another platform by duplicating this low one and place it above it, if you remove the frictionless material from the carter rigid body, 
when trying to jump on the platform, you get stuck in the side. Whereas with the frictionless material, the friction gets only applied to the movement in the x-direction in the code. 